Checkout Tracking by the NPD Group brings you a receipt collecting system that gathers data anonymously through technology we created, providing your businesses with answers. Hey everybody. So, yes, we're going to be talking about mobile on television. This is a really new thing. Uh, and actually, just this past six months, using TV for UA seems to be something everybody's talking about. But uh, most people don't really have experience with. Uh, it's a pretty new thing for our space. And really bridging traditional and performance marketing that we're used to from the mobile channel uh, is ongoing and uh, pretty fascinating. So we're going to cover where TV came from, where it's headed, and how to do it uh, pretty quickly here. We just got about 20 minutes. So digital advertising and traditional advertising could not be more different, right? The left side is what we're all used to, all of these crazy acronyms. The right side's got its own crazy acronyms. Um, I guess the best way to sum this up is traditional advertising is more branding. Uh, people aren't looking, you know, when, when Pepsi, actually I had a friend uh, tell me in New York recently that when their company, uh, it's a big jeans company actually, every year they run about $50 million in TV commercials. And uh, they just do that. They don't really know how to measure it properly. There's companies that give them huge studies and things like that. But they are so far away from where we are, what we're used to, knowing exactly what we're getting for every install and down the stream what the guy does. Uh, it really couldn't be any different. So let's take a quick history way back to 2007. Japan, was out ahead of us in many uh, other regards, started with TV. DNA and GRI blew up in the late 2000s, as many of you know. Uh, social gaming platforms uh, really started there. Uh, and they started spending what even today is a healthy amount of money, $70 million in three months in 2010 at one point, getting people on their gaming platforms, both on PC uh, and mobile. Germany was next. Germany still out ahead of uh, the US uh, in many regards. Uh, so ProSieben, I don't know how many of you guys know this network there. Uh, they actually are kind of a conglomerate. They acquired uh, uh, some assets that basically they help you with mobile CPI and TV, and they kind of blend the two together or are working on that. Uh, and about 2012, they started running a lot of stuff. If you live in Germany, you're, you're not unused to seeing mobile game ads. Uh, they did a deal with Kabam recently. Uh, we've got Castle Clash, German guy. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in Germany. And then 2013, this really made a, a big splash. Puzzles and Dragons, obviously a hit. Part of what made it a hit is soon after launch, they ran a big TV campaign and got uh, three to four million users, according to Gung Ho. So Japan was first. Now everybody from the West wants to go to Japan. And friends in Japan have told me that, you know, the mobile UA channels are just so saturated. CPIs are, you know, in the high single digits across so many channels. He said, you know, it's no wonder that we're all buying on TV. I heard somebody uh, anecdotally tell me that mobile games in Japan are the third biggest spender on TV. And this has been going on for some time. So King went over there and ran this when they launched on iPhone. Delicious. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on in that commercial, but uh, it worked out for them. So they, I don't know what that dip is, but they went to number one uh, pretty quickly. Obviously, Candy Crush had already built a bit of a brand, but you know, Japan's kind of its own planet. Uh, and, you know, they did mobile UA as well. They did billboards, all kinds of offline, but obviously worked for them. And my goodness, the last couple of years, everybody's jumping in. com to us is doing a lot of TV. Uh, they've been doing it in Korea a long time. Um, obviously, Game of War, Kim Kardashian, uh, just tons of people. In fact, mobile gaming has already passed console gaming, which when I grew up, there's console game ads on TV all the time uh, in spent. So um, I think it was reported Machine Zone spent something like $82 million uh, in seven months. Supercell, uh, almost that much. So it's pretty amazing to me actually to learn that they're already outspending uh, these big, big gaming uh, studios. So what are the benefits of the TV there for? Install lift, and we're all used to these uh, from our, our world, right? How many more installs did I get nationally or in a certain market because I ran TV? That's something pretty easy to look like. People like AppsFire and Kachava have been building in things that help you see lift. Re-engagement, this one gets overlooked sometime, uh, sometimes. If you've got a game, uh, and by the way, you don't need to have a big famous game to be in TV, we'll, we'll touch on that. Uh, but you know, if you've got a game, it may already be on a lot of phones. Uh, the average person, even you right now, probably think you have maybe 15, 25 apps on your phone that you really know and 
remember? You probably have well over 100. Uh, the average is even over that. Uh, so, you know, a lot of your apps are on phones, maybe they haven't used you in a while, and they see your commercial, they re-engage. Lowering digital spend. This is a big thing that uh, we've heard Supercell is into. So, you know, if you're spending 100 million or 1 million or 100,000 on uh, Facebook and other channels, you know what your CPI is, the user who sees uh, your commercial on television is much more likely to click on your ad uh, if he's already got uh, the name of your brand, the name of your game in his head. This is particularly good if you're in a competitive category, like casino or clash of something. Uh, <laughs> branding and credibility. Uh, this is more for the bigger guys. Uh, another thing that, that some of these big names I've been dropping are, <coughs> are uh, counting on. Basically, you know, hey, we've got a hit. Let's run with it. We've got money to spend. Let's try to just blot out Mindshare uh, and be the guys uh, that people go to for an RPG or a casino game. All right, let's talk about the practicalities of how to make it happen. <coughs> so you need creative. You need a media spend. Sometimes these can, these can be the same company more and more lately since I've left advertising. They're different companies. And you need analytics. This is really raw. This is like people working on this today. Creative. Uh, different ways you can uh, go about this. So many of you in this room already have creative. It may not be awesome. It may not be stuff that you're really psyched to throw up on NBC during the uh, Final Four, but you're probably already working with uh, video uh, distribution networks and ad providers, uh, or you have a trailer for the app stores. So you can use that. You can re-edit it to 15s, 30s, 60s for television. Uh, and you know, that's kind of a relief. You don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. You, you've already got something in the back. Um, you know, one thing that, and maybe I'm biased because I used to be on the creative side when I was in advertising, but one thing that can get overlooked is really breakthrough creative. Having a so-so commercial, which we'll see next, uh, versus an awesome commercial with a compelling idea that really resonates with people can mean the difference of, you know, 10x, 100x in spend. So this commercial, which some of you have seen, uh, 55 million YouTube views when I pulled it, almost 500,000 likes, uh, debuted during the Super Bowl in 2015. Uh, the next commercial, debuted during the Super Bowl in 2015. Uh, couple hundred thousand views. Uh, so many bad dislikes uh, that you'll see after this one that they actually stopped reporting uh, on it, both from game developers. Let's see the first one. Almost no gameplay footage, right? We're laughing, we're sharing it with people. Uh, here's a competitor of a similar game, Super Bowl commercial. If we can turn up the volume, it'd be great. Otherwise, we're good. Heroes charge. Lead your heroes in the hit mobile game. Download Heroes Charge now. All right, so which game are you going to want to download? And to be fair, by the way, that was a lot shorter time to work with. Uh, and these are very smart guys with a big hit game uh, who have since acknowledged, you know, they maybe waded into this the wrong way. But I wanted to use this to illustrate how important creative is. So how do you get your creative produced? There's different, different ways to do this. One is to go with a big agency. 72 and Sunny is a, a popular one uh, based out of LA. Uh, recognized agency. Tons of awesome stuff to show you. They're going to send eight people into your boardroom, uh, razzle-dazzle you with a shiny deck, and they're going to want you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars just to get you started. They're, they're the, those are the type of people that did that Supercell ad. Option two, and actually I noticed a lot of game developers going with this uh, that I speak with, is a smaller regional ad agency. Uh, the creative is not going to be uh, great. 
again, maybe this is my bias from the big agency world, but it's usually not the award-winning, compelling stuff. Um, you know, those guys that um, Jerry Graff and the team that did that super sell ad, they make it look easy, but coming up with great creative uh, that's memorable is difficult. And by the way, you don't need a big celebrity. That's almost incidental. Animation. So, you know, um, some global options have really made this inexpensive. Now, these guys are not going to come up with the concept, but there are really good animators uh, in Argentina, South America in particular, that we find can put together a concept that you have uh, for you know, very, very little money. Option four, some people are getting into crowdsourcing. Even some in the advertising world are creating whole ad agencies that just do crowdsource stuff. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this, but uh, you know, if you really have a low budget, yeah, there's some sites and things like that you can go to and say, what do you got? Testing is really important. So this is another cool little part of the bridge between digital and traditional. Uh, we're used to testing, right, with the Facebook concepts and creative and uh, things like that. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is on a television commercial, you can even test on TV. You can call up NBC or your media team will call up NBC in New York during the, uh, you know, whatever you want to advertise during. Um, and say, hey, here's five commercials. Run this one Monday, this one Tuesday, this one Wednesday. Then you watch the analytics and you can see what's working. But even before that, you can actually go into Facebook and take the creative that you've done. Um, it doesn't have to be different commercials. We're talking about you know, ending with your game on an iPad or your game on an Android phone or saying new update available or starting the commercial, making clear this is a mobile game. A lot of mobile developers I find, they do some crazy thing for a game and there's a quick little logo from Google Play and iOS and nobody really knows what that was. I had a lot of relatives um, when that Game of War ad was running a lot tell me they all assumed it was a PC game. Um, so testing is really important and there are a lot of avenues uh, to do it. And some of these guys, as I mentioned on the right side, are doing some uh, cool things uh, in terms of uh, tracking how different tests are going, you know, looking at the hour after your commercial ran, uh, what happened exactly. Media, two big options. Large, big, you know, Starcom or big media agency like that. Same kind of thing as the creative side. They'll walk you through step by step. They're really expensive. You'll end up paying about 20, 30% of your media spend. And, you know, they're working with Supercell and they're working with, you know, Tide. So you'll probably get uh, maybe a more junior account executive, um, not the kind of attention you'd get uh, from a local media agency. And media buying is not rocket science. That big agency is going to dazzle you with all kinds of things that they pay a lot of money for and drown you in data. Uh, but just to test things out and get off the ground, which I find many developers are looking to do, um, you can go with a smaller guy, and it's not going to be as big a difference as if you go with a, a no-name creative shop versus somebody who can really deliver something like what we saw from Supercell. I wanted to give you guys a little glimpse of what a media plan looks like. So when you call up, in this case, uh, I think this was NBC's affiliates in Las Vegas. This is more of a local campaign. Uh, here's what they tell you. Okay, you're going to be on the Today Show. You're going to be on Late Night with Seth Meyers. Here's how much you're going to pay per spot. Uh, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars um, By the way, my friend who's in media noticed, noted to me, he's like, I don't know why more people, it's so easy to buy media. It seems intimidating, but, you know, you could buy a commercial, you know, uh, proposing to your wife to go on a date next week for $300 like during a pretty big show in your home city. I mean, it's not that expensive on a first spot basis as you might think. Um, so that's what a plan looks like. Uh, and actually it breaks down in some of the ways that we're used to, right? You can see CPM, you can see CPM by your, uh, by your demographic. CPMs on TV, if you're wondering, are higher for sure, by the way. You're not gonna be seeing $1.50 uh, CPMs on television. You're gonna be seeing three, four, five, ten, twenty dollars $20. It's particularly for your demographic. Here's a tool you can play around with today that's uh, underused. So Facebook has this insights tool, right? You can drop a custom audience on Facebook of, you know, everyone who's ever spent more than $50 in your app. Uh, and within, you know, 10 seconds, it'll tell you where you have outlier markets of spenders. And that's where we recommend to our clients that they actually focus on TV. Um, and, you know, of course, Facebook has APIs that can plug into all kinds of other cool dashboards and analytics and booking platforms uh, that some people are working on. Okay, analytics, this is a big one, right? How do we decide how this thing went? So we talked about Facebook. You know, see how your, what your CPIs look like in the markets that you're attacking. Uh, another side note, I 
would discourage you from trying to put money into the United States nationally. Even $500,000, I've met people that have seen no uplift, no change. It's just too big a market. Maybe in Spain or Italy or something, you could do something like that, even the UK. But if you're targeting you know, Orlando, Florida with you know, $50,000, you you're probably gonna see your CPIs drop. Boosts in organic installs and re-engagement. We talked about re-engagement. That's something that you can look at through your uh, attribution partners, which are already really good at that. And you can time campaigns like push notifications and things with TV. So we have a few minutes left for questions. That is all I have. It's a really exciting time right now for this. Uh, you all are building a huge category business-wise. It's billions of dollars already. Uh, and I think that uh, it's already dominating console on TV, and it'll be exciting um, to watch what you guys do in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, so you had uh, you just said in the last slide there, um, advising against putting media spend into national TV. You had some people recommending uh, recommend targeting specific cities, um, right? But also at the same time saying like you you cannot go for like New York or Los Angeles as a city because it's just too big. Um, I would agree with that. Do you have any recommendations on that? Yeah. So it's funny you say that. We found success in mid-level markets. Uh, so right, putting that into Facebook Insights, uh, if you find, you, you'll almost inevitably find that there's something in your top 10 cities of spenders that doesn't reflect the population size, right? Because of course, you're going to see New York's going to be big because it's a big city. So there's, you know, a quantity is quality to some degree. But picking markets, like I mentioned Orlando or Las Vegas for casino developers is very popular. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, TV rates are exponentially lower there. Uh, but you may have a lot of good users there, and it may just be a place that uh, is a good spot for your demographic and for your game. Um, so I, we, I would recommend focusing on that tier. I've definitely met many people of, you know, I don't know, maybe because it's sexy or some agency told them so, they launched in New York and LA, and they didn't see much lift. Okay. Hi, thank you for that. Two parts. Um, one, I saw the slide with those analytics tools, which, if any, do you toward tend to gravitate towards, like Kochava and that slide. And then the other thing is, have you used much uh, to success with promo codes at the end of the TV spots? Great question. I just had a conversation with a developer about this today. So quick anecdote. This was two, three years old. Big uh, casual gaming developer that we'd all know. Uh, this uh, great VP of uh, marketing pushed doing a TV campaign. They did it. They had a code at the end. By the way, they're very popular and successful in Japan, to be fair. He built out a financial mo a model of how many uh, people they thought installs they'd get. It was like 14,612. Uh, and when all was done, they spent 50 grand, I think, uh, they got 12 installs. 12 people actually texted the thing. I don't know, in the US that doesn't work so well, but uh, the other things do. In terms of who's really measuring this well, nobody yet. Uh, I, uh, uh, I think Apps Flyer and Kochava, I respect for getting out ahead. Uh, and by the way, maybe other attribution guys are doing this yet uh, as well, I just don't know. Um, they are building TV products. Some of them have been announced that at least say, hey, we think this IP address is in Minneapolis and, and in the hour after your campaign ran, your spot ran, here's what we saw. But these are really raw. I think they'd even admit that. They're very basic. Um, so this is all in development right now. Any more questions? Hello. Um, I think you briefly touched on this. Um, you think using celebrities are incidental. Um, I see as with Kate Upton and Liam Neeson. Could you elaborate why you think? Yeah, I don't know. Again, this may be from my creative history of coming up with ideas. We always believed the idea uh, was really the thing. And if we, if we actually, if I pulled up, you know, the top kind of 20 creative, uh, most effective or most creative award-winning ads for the last year, probably only a few of them would have celebrities. They just happen to make really good use of a celebrity. So if you make good use of a celebrity, it matters, but they're really expensive. Uh, and the chances that somebody's gonna see your ad, and maybe it's gonna be not as great an ad because you had to spend a lot of your money on the celebrity, just like a movie cannot be so well produced if they had to spend all their money on a celebrity, uh, that, oh, I just love that celebrity so much, I'm gonna try the game, uh, is unlikely. That's just my opinion. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one question for you. Um, I've seen really, really good results with uh, direct response TV campaigns. That's kind of what we're talking about, Because you just mentioned yeah. media agencies in general. Yeah. Oh, how do you mean? Sorry? Well, you just mentioned media agencies in general, and I, I think there is still a big difference between somebody trying to put you into prime time for a 
potentially oh. high costs and kind of those that are really experienced with direct response uh, campaigns. The 1AM, the kind of remnant inventory and things like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, that's true. And I feel like a lot of developers I've talked to have rightly been waiting in with this, uh, you know, he's referring to uh, not being a, uh, yeah, in prime time, maybe, or a late night. Actually, Proceben's mostly this. At 1 a.m., you're bored, you're watching TV, and you see an ad. It's cheaper, for sure. I don't know. I'm of two minds about it. I think it's great that it's cheaper. It's tempting, right? But uh, for us, anyway, the partners we work with on TV, they've seen a lot of success with uh, not prime time, per se, but, you know, Ellen and things like that. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs>